I am joined by Robert Griffin the third, James White, Field Yates, Mina Kimes. All right, so first play we're going to look at, second and two, one of the Patriots' first offensive plays. What's going on, everyone? Taylor Kyle's here for CLNS Media, coming at you with another episode of Pat's Daily, brought to you by our good friends at Prize Picks and Game Time. Today, I am joined by friend of the show, Derek Klassen, now of the Athletic Football Show. Very cool, my friend. To talk about the Patriots quarterback situation, because in case you haven't heard, Jacoby Brissett has been named the Patriots quarterback one, despite Gerard Mayo telling us that Drake May outplayed him. So since we're probably not going to see Drake May for quite some time, I wanted to sit down with you, Derek, go through some of the things that Drake May did well, some of the things he can improve on, so we have some good perspective heading into the season, and then we could also reference for the next time we actually see Drake May. So before we get into all that good stuff, buddy, new gig, start of a new season, how are you doing? Where's your head at? you feel it i'm feeling great man yeah i've been on this show uh, what feels like a dozen times now i'm always happy to join but yeah this is the first time being part of just the athletic you know we were talking a little bit uh before we turned the cameras on i used to have you know three four places that you would have to shout out for my work and now there's just the one so uh much simpler season for me this time around that's awesome buddy you deserve it i'm so glad extremely well deserved not easy filling in for somebody like nate tice but if it had to be anybody i'm so glad it was you um all right let's get into it because you know i could just sing your praises all day first before we get into the tape i want your perspective on the decision to start jacoby Brissett because once again like i was there i think it's my not me specifically but the beat was there we all knew that drake may was the better quarterback towards the end of the summer and that is why drod may acknowledge it but at the same time, there is value in starting Jacoby Brissett, a guy who's won games in the system, is very familiar with it. Also, somebody who was voted a captain, actually, today, the day of recording, so clearly has a lot of command in the locker room. And one thing the coaches have mentioned a ton is he will have answers to the problems that he will be presented. So what were your thoughts on the decision to go with number seven, Jacoby Brissett? It's conflicting, right? Uh, because on the one hand, I want to see Drake May, man. And we'll talk about all the reasons why, but like, I just want to see him go out there and play. I thought he was a fantastic prospect. I think even beyond just being a great prospect, he's just a fun player. And so I think when he does get out there to play, it's going to be a great time for everybody involved. On the other hand, Jacoby is, he's probably about as good as you can do in terms of that spot starter, veteran presence, understands how to bring the locker room together. And I actually do think that that's valuable for a team like New England where, there's an obvious shifting of the guards when you have to, you know, Bill Belichick is on his way out the door and like you kind of need this when you're going through all this turbulent change, um, even though Gerard Mayo obviously is a Patriots guy and I think he's a good coach when there's so much change. It's kind of nice to have a veteran who's been in the building, who's been in this offense, who's played a lot of NFL football um, and like you said, going to have more, you know, of the, the simple built in answers to plays and to problems. Than Drake may might like Drake may better athlete and better arms. So he, he might eventually get to some answers, but in terms of actually understanding what's going on pre-snap and all that, Jacoby's going to, going to have this, these, these guys, right. So I think it'll be fine for the first, I don't know, four five, six weeks or whatever, but still, still on Drake may watch. Then we got to move the train along a little bit, get to uh, get to the future. I'm also curious because one of the burning questions that we've been getting from fans is what is the value of having Drake May start out on the bench and what can he really learn from not playing? Because even Gerard Mayo told us the best way to get better at football is by playing football. But again, like we mentioned, there are going to be some things that he's going to face that he's never even seen before. And while, of course, it's one thing to actually do it versus seeing it, having some familiarity with what you could face could be a beneficial. So again, from your perspective, what do you think Drake May can get better at? behind the scenes as a guy who's going to be the scout team quarterback going to be in these meetings learning week to week i think it's two things one just some of the technical stuff and this has always been the big thing with drake may whether it's footwork some of his um release mechanics at times can get a little bit weird and like short arms so just making sure that he's a little bit cleaner in that sense and there's nothing wrong with that i mean you look at guys like patrick mahomes jordan love um even lamar jackson when he first came out of college these are all guys that took at least a half a season if not much longer in jordan love's case to kind of fix some of the mechanical problems they had coming out of college and are now considerably cleaner throwers than they were so i think if drake can just get a little bit more cleaned up in that area that would be nice and then just there is some degree of you know, I think playing post snap, you obviously just need real reps. You just need to see how the bullets feel. But in terms of like understanding how things are going to go pre snap and all that, I think you actually can get a good understanding of that on the bench and just being in the quarterback room with a guy as smart as Jacoby Brissett. So I think those are probably the two areas Drake can get a lot of value even while he's not playing. 
And for a guy like Drake May, where the coaches raved about his progress, and you didn't even have to hear about it from behind the scenes. You saw it on the field where the footwork looked significantly improved. You can really tell he took to Alex Van Pelt's coaching with the left foot up. You want it to be more like, you know, jazz and metallic, all that. Coaches raved about him. And then mentally, like you said, being able to learn from Jacoby and having Drake already be a really smart guy, that should do wonders for him that I don't think maybe we can be as appreciative behind the scenes, but even small things like how Patrick Mahomes has talked about Alex Smith and how he literally just learned how to be a professional where it's like entering a new job. You don't know what you don't know. Same with freaking Gerard Mayo. He said, I don't really know about being head coach. I'm learning every day. And to have someone like Jacoby who can get you through the day, get you through a game prep week is going to be huge. But enough of that talk. Let's get into some dang film. Now we're going to go in chronological order in terms of the games, starting out with the Patriots versus the Panthers. This is actually not going to be one of Drake May's better plays uh, from the preseason, but still starting off on something that he can get better at. So what do you got for us, brother? Yeah, you mentioned earlier, and I actually agree. Drake May's footwork overall is probably better in a better spot than I think it was coming out of college. Still needs to clean up some of that stuff. And I say specifically, he does a really poor job sometimes of when he goes one, two, three, throw. Sometimes that last step into the throw can get a little wonky, and I think this is a good example. This was early on in the Eagles game. He's going to try to throw this uh, this flat route over to, to Kayshawn Booty. Throws it high, almost puts it in the sideline. And to me, the biggest issue is um, you watch him get to the top of his drop. His last step here, um, his lead foot, it's so cut off from the target. Look at where he's trying to throw. He's trying to put this ball on, what, the 34-yard line? Yeah. But the front, like his toes are pointed at like the numbers here or like uh, almost inside the numbers. Like it's just, it's so hard to get proper clean rotation when you're kind of cutting off where you're trying to throw to beforehand. And this is why he kind of gets a little bit like short armed at the top of his release. Everything just ends up really clunky. So overall better footwork, but he needs to fix some of that stuff. Is this similar at all to when we talked about J.J. McCarthy, where we're talking about the wild misses to his left, where it was really like when he would open and plant that foot and that would lead to some of the spray misses because things weren't really aligned? So it's actually the opposite problem where Drake, I'll, I'll try to get to exactly where it is. Drake here, his foot is a little bit tight to the target. Like like okay. I said, his, his toe here, whereas J.J. McCarthy, his left foot would almost be in line with his right heel like like he would open up too far and swing around too far and mitch trubisky had this problem um all the throw let all the trubisky can't throw left means were not for nothing it was because he had the mechanical issue of swinging too far out so um if may and mccarthy could somehow merge together and and him and get find the middle ground there with how they open their flat foot um they'd be in a great spot old trunks go 10 fusion action there now mm. last thing on this because i did notice kind of Parsing through all right, three step, five step, whatever. Quick game seemed like the place where Drake was the least consistent. And it was when he had to plant and then throw. Was that something you saw as well? And is improving there really just more about comfort, reps, getting it done enough? Or is there something else maybe that he's going to have to do to be more consistent? Because quick game obviously is a massive part of the West Coast offense and what Alice Van Pelt wants to do. I think it's just coaching points and then reps because I'm at, we're going to have a, a clip here in a second where his footwork is actually really good when he goes one, two, three, and then he gets to hitch and progress into something else. It's like he somehow cleans himself up when he does that. But when he's just one, two, three balls out, there's just something about like that final step into throw that he just gets really wonky with. Yeah, okay, so we're on the same beach. So with that little in uh, segue, rather, intro, those are different things, let's get to the next play. This is going to be the play heard around the world in New England. Everybody raved about this. It's actually one that Drake told us he messed up in practice and then came back in the game and executed it. Everybody was really excited for him. I could have sworn I saw him completed in practice. Maybe I'm crazy. But still, being able to see that tangible growth taking it from practice to the field is huge. So break this one down for us, buddy. Yeah, there's there's two things to me that are that really stand out about this play. First, he's going to open obviously to this um, to the boundary side. He's going to try to throw. It looks like a, a sail corner route, but this safe or this outside corner here is going to kind of cap it. So I'll play the clip a little bit. See, he opens here. He wants to throw this, but he sees thirty just has outside leverage on it. I mean, that's that's closed every day of the week. That's just not happening. And you can see he quickly, as soon as, look at how he bounces at the top of this drop. Gets to the top of his drop, boom, instantly comes off of it, doesn't waste any time, knows where he needs to be. And that, to me, is the most important part of this play, is that 
a lot of the times with rookies, you'll see they'll get to the top of the drop here and they won't turn yet. They'll they'll wait and they'll be like, is this close? Is this close? Is this close? And then they'll finally get to the next play. Drake doesn't wait, instantly goes over, makes the throw. And that to me is, like I said, when he goes one to two to three and then resets, he looks pretty clean. It's just he's got to clean up those other throws. But right there, that's as good as it gets. And that end zone angle shows it perfectly. This was really the poster child for me of him tying his eyes to his feet. One thing that TC McCartney said, that was really the focus in the spring and in the summer. When I asked him about it later in the summer, he's like, oh, yeah, no, Drake did a great job. And it really did show in camp, in practice, in practice and in the games, him being able to do this. And it just makes his entire operation more efficient. I think it was also something we kind of briefly touched on that he can improve when we went through his draft date. Definitely. Like, like you saw the flashes, right? Mm -hmm. But you still wanted to see, like, okay, can he actually do this consistently at the NFL level? Um, based on preseason, I'm pretty confident he can, actually. Oh, yeah. All right. So we're talking about processing, getting through your reads. Another very good example of Drake May understanding what the coverage is doing to him and taking what the defense gives him. Yeah, this was, uh, again, part of the last play is just he did such a good job of as soon as he realized he needs to come off of something, boom, gets there and knows what his next option is. That's exactly what he does here. Before I run it, they're gonna they're gonna take this uh kind of in a condensed split here. This receiver is gonna run, I don't know, 12, 14 yard, uh, one of those deep curl routes over the middle. That's what Drake is going to want to throw. But he gets to the top here. I think as soon as he brings his eyes back to this right side of the field, mm -hmm. he feels that he's getting a little bit of pressure here, potentially from the running back picking up the linebacker. And he realizes as soon as he does that reset, he's like, All right, I need to know if this guy's open right on this reset step. And if it's not, I need to go to something else. Doesn't feel like this is going to be open. So he immediately just pulls it and throws it to the flat. Takes takes a few yards that he can get. And Polk takes it from what would have been like a completion for zero or maybe a yard, um, mm -hmm. obviously into more yards. But, you know, the good offenses, they'll take plays that should be zero yards and eventually go into five. So just credit to Drake for trusting his guy to go make a play there. Um, can we go a little bit deeper into the footwork in this West Coast offense? Because... Like we talked about at UNC, especially in that second season, Drake's footwork was just not ideal in terms of sometimes he wouldn't, we already talked about it, he wouldn't always have his eyes and his feet together, but also it just felt like things weren't really in sync where it didn't feel like, okay, this hop means this, this redirect means that. So in this West Coast offense, maybe using this as an example, how do you see Drake's eyes kind of showing you where his brain is going in the play? Yeah, so at UNC, it was it was nonsense. Like There was nothing tied to anything. It was all air raid BS. Um, but you'll see in this clip, you can see he uses his first step out of, out of the break. What's the safety doing? Okay, he gets an eye on the safety. Then he comes back to whatever his first read is, which is here. He thinks, because his safety is, I'm assuming what he's thinking here is because the safety is on the far hash, he wants to try to at least get his eyes to, to the opposite hash and go here. So he's going to hold on to this. And then the timing is you get one hitch yep. and you see it here. You get one hitch where, okay, is this guy open? He's He would, if this were going to be open and he felt it would be open, he would throw it at the top of that hitch. But again, he doesn't. And so it's okay. Top of the hitch, not there. Transition straight to my other option. And that's more the timing that you want is like, okay, I get one hitch per whatever my next thing is. Right. And that's basically the, the operation that he's going with here. And last one I'll ask before we end on this, because talking to Gerard Mayo today, he mentioned that Drake is going to be the scout team quarterback. And one thing I was like, oh, so Jalen Rager's mentioned that that allowed him to emulate some of the best receivers in the game. And then he got to take things from them. So obviously the first month of the season, the Patriots are playing some very good quarterbacks, especially mechanically, Geno, Burrow, Brock Purdy, uh, Aaron Rodgers, who was one of the guys he looked up to so much growing up. But he also said there's a distinction because they're still going to do, in terms of progressions, what the Patriots want to do. So there isn't like a, something getting lost in translation there. Can Drake still improve in the ways that we're seeing here, like with knowing how to get through his reads and everything? Can he still do that on the practice field facing the Patriots defense, even if, you know, he's not getting the same crazy pressure packages he's going to get from other teams, but still playing a disciplined defense that's going to be structurally sound? I think so, because honestly, a lot of – what is going to help you as a rookie is not necessarily learning how to break down the 301. What is Steve Spagnolo throwing at me? It's like, can you do the 101 vanilla 
we're just got to keep this thing on the road when you get cover three on first down. And, and that's really what you just need to be able to do as a rookie. And then obviously, as you progress into the game, you can start to do the 201, 301, 401 level stuff. Um, so I actually think as a scout quarterback, he's going to be able to get that timing down a little bit better and all that stuff. Oh, I know we're going to clip that already. That's going to, I think, give a lot of people a little less pause for Drake starting out on the bench. All right, we are going to move on to the Panthers. Oh, not the Panthers game. We're on the Eagles game. We're going to move on to the Commanders game. But first, quick word from our friends at game time. Be right back. Prize picks this time, and they are America's number one daily fantasy sports app. With over 5 million active members, it's the easiest and most exciting way uh, to get in on the action this football season. Unlike other apps on prize picks, it's just you against the numbers. Prize picks is actually running a promo for the month of September where one Caleb Williams passing yard gets you a win on prize picks. It's the entire week of September, so you can use that one passing yard uh, as one of your blocks uh, and watch the winnings roll in. You can see it on the screen in front of me, Caleb Williams right now. The over-under is 255 and a half, uh, or the more or less rather, uh, but it is one yard for Caleb Williams. So make sure to use that and uh, put your prize picks together on the app. Download it today and use code CLNS and get $50 instantly when you play five bucks. That's code CLNS on prize picks to get $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to get those 50 bucks. It's guaranteed. That's prize picks. Run your game. All right, we're back now. Let's break down some of Drake May's tape from the last game we're going to see from him for a while when he faced the Washington Commanders. Yeah, this is so I wanted to include this clip because it's kind of up to interpretation as to whether or not this is the correct play from Drake May. This is a dude. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is. And so what you're going to get here, I'll, I'll pause the clip here at the beginning. You're going to get uh, a deep over um, like a really deep over into, you know, uh, opposite from the opposite uh, sideline. And then you're going to get kind of a dig route behind it. They're going to be running man coverage. So on one hand, you could think, OK. If I'm getting man coverage, they're playing single high. This guy's going to be cleared out of here. If I can just beat whatever the whole defender is here, this dig route is just one-on-one. -on -one. If I throw it on time, it's there. And so there is probably some degree of, if you want to do the spit spot textbook perfect quarterbacking thing, that's the play you're going to go to. And what it would look like would be, okay, Drake goes, kind of pauses. I actually don't know why he doesn't get more depth here. I would think that this should probably be a three-step drop, but I'm not entirely sure. I was thinking Either, same, I thought it was so weird yeah. to talk about footwork <laughs> with this concept. Okay. I almost wonder if part of the problem is it's like they're running it to where this is almost like feels like an RPO where he's just pull and then throw to this right side. I almost wonder if like that's the footwork that he's going with. Um, that's why this play is, is really, really weird. Um, or that's I'm part of why it's really weird. That, it does look like RPO footwork, just really quick fake, just stand because you're ready to get it out. You don't need to get depth. Right. It's almost like the, the right side of the play looks like an RPO, and then the left side is more standard drop back, so the timing can get really wonky. Um, but if he were to get to this dig, it would be like he would want to start looking at it like kind of here. Mm -hmm. Instead, he keeps his eyes down the field. And why I don't think it's actually that bad of a play is if Drake thinks he's getting man coverage, and if he thinks with one, this little shimmy he gives to try to hold the safety and his arm talent, he should be able to make this throw, right? And right. so Drake is always going to be a guy that wants to go make whatever the home run is. Like if he feels like he can swing for a home run or, or swing into the gap for a double, he's going to go swing for the home run. <laughs> um, and this is very much that type of play. So again, like I kind of said at the top, if he were doing the textbook, perfect thing he would probably want to come back and throw the dig route that's going to be running into his vision mm -hmm. but i i have such a hard time faulting a guy for being like i have a home run here i'm gonna go for it and he just happened to miss and one of the reasons i said it was a doozy everything you just mentioned but also if we look at the all 22 it looks like a glance to the right which is what they really like to do. And sometimes I do like, like the Dolphins do a great job of this, where sometimes they'll use RPO footwork, but it'll actually be play action. They're going deeper downfield, and it makes it really tough as a zone defender to know, because you're thinking, oh, RPO, it's coming out fast, and you may be planning your feet, and then Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle are like sprinting behind you. But because Taekwon runs this in-breaker, it ends up colliding almost with Jalen Polk's route. So – if it weren't for that kind of odd part of this play design, and I don't know what exactly happened. I, I wish I could ask Alex Van Pelt. We couldn't talk to him after this. But I would be more comfortable with him throwing the dagger if that wasn't there. 
But because it is, and you have two routes running into each other, I feel like, especially in a preseason game where you're trying to see what you can do, it makes sense to go with the crosser, but the combination of maybe trying, it seems like he wants to move the safety and it doesn't work, and having the pocket pretty much pushed into his lap combines, and it's just not a great throw. But it was one of the rare misses we've seen from Drake May like this on this type of route. And that's the other thing. I'm glad you mentioned the pocket. If if 54 here doesn't lose in, in catastrophic fashion – it's this is a pretty clean throw that like you would expect the top 10 caliber type of quarterbacks to make like if this throw is here for like here if i stop it here and this guy thinks that this guy can get under the safety yeah. kyler murray's throwing that geno smith is throwing that dak is throwing that justin herbert's throwing that like the guys that are in the top you know half or a third of the league they want to throw that and have the arm i don't really blame drake for trying it it's just he you know kind of gets a little crowded that's such an interesting play. All right, now we're going to move on to – I really like the example of the plays you're going to use because it's not super often that you have a team run the same play twice in a game. But when you do, sometimes if it goes wrong one time and it goes better the next, it's easier to see what the differentiating factors were and how one player did something better or didn't vice versa. So let me pull up this one clip where it doesn't go well, then we're going to later go to one where it goes right. Yeah, so this is – obviously they're in, in, they're in a three-by-one look here, kind of – Backed up in their own red zone, which is not great. Um, I think this was like a third and 10. It's it, something like that. Maybe third and like 11. It, it, they might have been a little bit pushed back. Um, but either way, they're going to run. I'll kind of run the clip here. The two and three here are going to run kind of like a, basically just two digs right behind each other. And I think at the beginning of the clip, when Drake gets to the top or like as he's going through his drop, I think he doesn't like the prospect of the number three here getting squeezed by both the linebacker and the safety who can drive yeah. down. I think he just, you can tell he's not comfortable squeezing that throw in, um, at least not right now. Maybe maybe down the line he feels more comfortable with that, but it, this kind of looks like it's going to be open. Like that looks like a lot of grass, but if this guy keeps moving, this safety pins down, that throw is not there for very long. So I get why he moves off of it. Then what happens is he's coming down to this isolated curl, um, what, come back, whatever you want to call it. The problem is this guy runs the route to like 14 yards and eventually comes back. You can see him dilly dallying around and whatever that was. I think you can tell if you look at how long it takes this route and then how many times Drake hitches up. He is just waiting for this guy to come back to the ball. So yeah. to me, this speaks to like, okay, receiver was probably like two or three yards a little too deep on the route. And so Drake is not allowed to get this ball out in time. But to me, you can still dr see Drake mostly doing the right thing where he comes off his first read and then comes back to his isolated route tries to throw it on time receivers not on time can't fully make the throw because he's got a guy in his face so this to me was like you can see the inklings of a good play mm -hmm. and just everybody wasn't on the same page and couldn't finish it yeah, this is closer to the quarterback school than receiver school, but Tyquan Thornton has been the ex for the Patriots, and he's gotten better separation this season, and it seems like maybe he's you know putting together enough foundation to maybe improve, but it's little things like this where sometimes you're not really sure just watching it live or from the naked eye who exactly was wrong here. Maybe you think because Drake may also face his pressure, kind of has to get it out, it's on him. But great point by you, the depth is off, so it makes it look like Drake kind of short arms it. And it's one of those that live stuck out to me because I'm thinking, well, he doesn't really miss those throws. There are certain ones where like some corner routes and some goal balls, you will see Drake kind of sail those to where it's kind of like, I don't really know what happened, but you'll live with those because he can make those as well. But this was one where live you're not sure, but – yeah, that route depth really kind of hurts him and then obviously can't cradle it. But we have the clip of the receiver doing it right, and I will clip that here. All right. Yeah, so they run what is – it's not the same concept, but it's very similar where, again, they're in three-by-one here. They have, like, kind of some in-breakers, kind of some attack the middle of the field stuff from this side, and then, again, just the isolated, you know, one-on-one -on -one curl route over to the other side. So, again, Drake – he doesn't even really honestly give the middle of the field that much of a look here, which I think is fine when this if you're tricks, in right? Yeah. If, if they're, if this guy's in press and you don't think this safety is going to be part of the throw, which obviously if you're just throwing a curl route right on the sideline, he's not going to be part of it anyway. I don't really blame the quarterback for being like, I'm just going to get to my one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to try to throw it. And you yeah. can see the, the line of scrimmage is at the 36, right? Mm -hmm. This receiver tries to break off the route right at the 46. So again, he's the last clip. He was at like 13, 14 yards where he's trying to break it off. Here is like closer to 10 or 11, which I think makes the timing make more sense. 
you can see even Drake is is kind of ready for it this time and he pins it right where it's actually supposed to be. So one, I think you can see just because the receiver runs the right depth and runs the right route, throws where it needs to be. The other thing I want to mention, look at May's, look at May's pocket movement here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was yeah. Just like <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And he does this all the time where he immediately top of his drop feels like, okay, the only way my right tackle can lose here is off the right side. Right. So he immediately steps in, steps up, falls out. Like that's just, it's as clean as can be, man. And this is why I was so frustrated in college when people said, oh, his pocket movement's all weird and it doesn't look all that good. No, no, he's every now and then he'll run into pressure. But right. four times out of five, he does something like this. And I'm going to take the four times out of five, even if the one out of five looks a little goofy. Dude, I swear. I think we went on like a five plus minute rant in the last video about all the misconceptions about Drake May as a prospect where actually, so now I'll use that to segue into this because JTL Sullivan of the quarterback school who does a phenomenal, phenomenal job, just really brings perspective that a lot of us couldn't possibly have. A big criticism he had for Drake May was getting himself into trouble by stepping into pressure, sometimes drifting. We've also discussed the drifting thing and how a lot of that was to compensate for the line and to just get himself into a better position based on where he was going to throw could still get it maybe a little more under control, do it less because it did develop into something that he did just out of necessity. Where in the NFL, sometimes you just need a subtle movement. You really don't need to go all the way to one side. How did you feel about the way that he handled some of the interior pressure? Did you feel like he was kind of getting himself into trouble? And do you think, I, I do think it's something he could work on, but what's your perspective there? I actually, so I didn't intend on showing this clip, but I actually have one more clip that actually could really segue into this uh into this you know what? before point. we get into it i will give you time to do that i'm going to send it over to our friends at game time real quick be right back the patriots are playing the cincinnati Bengals on sunday you can get in over uh, at pay paycor stadium for the lowest price guaranteed with game time they have a new feature it's called game time picks and it makes getting tickets to your favorite team's play to see your favorite team's play live even easier game time picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Uh, we're going to do a live read right now, Taylor, with the B-roll, and I'm going to go on the Game Time app on my cell phone and check Ooh. out just how much time or uh, how much money you can get into Paycor Stadium for. Right now, it's looking like Patriots at Bengals. You can get in for as low as 136 bucks. That's down like 25 Ooh. bucks from the last time I did this read. Not that bad. They have super deals, amazing deals, great deals all on the site, and they make it super simple to check out, pay, and get to the game. So we're going to do a lot more of these with um, the, the Seattle Seahawks coming up uh, because that's going to be a home game. But if you're going out to Cincinnati, make sure you check out uh, Game Time. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the app today, create an account, and use code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Again, that is code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Download today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, we're back. We got a bonus Drake May clip talking about his pocket presence and maybe some of the things that are misunderstood about how he negotiates and manages pressure. So let me throw this up for you, buddy. All right. Yeah, so this clip I really <laughs> wanted to show because what happens a lot with Drake May is Drake May is very... It's not panic, but a lot of the times when he sees color flash in a gap like this, I mean, this guy's inside of his left tackle's right shoulder. So you see defensive color. As soon as Drake May sees that a lot of the time, he's immediately going to slide away, which is most of the time the right thing to do. Like you are like sometimes you're going to end up pushing yourself into a looper, but like whatever, if you get the ball out in time, it doesn't really matter. But what happens here and why it looks like he fades into pressure is so he immediately he wants to take this slide. He starts sliding. But his left guard is kind of like pushing the guy back into his face now. And so he's able to cross the left tackle's face again. And now he's in Drake's face. So it like ends up looking as though Drake is, is sliding into pressure. But he's really not. He's doing the right thing and he's making the right play. It just the end result of it is like sometimes stuff happens and the big men up front just move in weird ways and you can't always account for it. Um, but he still gets to throw off and, and gets it there in time. You would like to throw to be a little bit more to the sideline and that would be the actual point of criticism here. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what he did in the pocket and what he's trying to accomplish as a pocket manager, I really love the process. Even if again, like the end result looks more cluttered than it should be. 
Totally agree. I feel like he kind of lucks out that he doesn't have to deal with the looper because of the chip from the running back where that guy looks like he's trying to get around. And then by the time he gets hit, he's like, I have no momentum. I just got to see if I can get my hands up or whatever. So you just like to mi- I don't want to make it a big deal until maybe he does get wild by a looper. And it's like, all right, see, that's when you don't want to do this. But at the same time, especially like I know uh, JT mentioned that he could have stepped up into that gap. He's kind of got to the right. But with tomorrow, Douglas's route going left, I also understand wanting to kind of slide towards where the throw is going. All he has to do is buy time. Like this is a match coverage where it's zoned to one side and then man to the other. There's really nobody there to even get to tomorrow. He just has to get enough space and buy that extra couple of ticks to be able to get him the ball over that defender. I agree with that for for two reasons. One, um, it's kind of like you said, if you know you're throwing to the left, I think sliding to the left is always fine um, just because like you exactly it makes it easier to make that throw like whereas yeah if he was sliding to his right here moving a little bit and having to throw across his body he has the arm talent to do it and I've seen him do it it's just a matter of like does a guy want to do that 12 times a game probably not so I understand why he doesn't want to do that I also think when you're at like this point where he wants to move I don't know if you necessarily know that your center is going to put this guy in the dirt and you'd like yeah, you know that you're going to have this much space here. So like, I think with the information he had with how fast the bullets are flying, like him immediately seeing flash of color inside his left tackles, right shoulder. I totally understand why he did what he did and, and tried to make this throw this way. And one example where I think he actually does do that, where he kind of steps up right and then throws to the left is the Jalen Polk crossing route from at some point in this game where that one all that's another one. That was his best throw, dude. So perfect. I literally got goosebumps. Let me see if I can actually pull it up for us real quick, because that was an absolute beauty from Drake May. Try to get us the end zone angle real quick. Yeah, that throw was – I almost put that one here myself, actually. We, we mentioned it. I have to. Uh, so uh, we're, we'll just clip that out and try to make it look like a better edit where I find this. Is this it? Yes, it is. Okay. I'm going to record this real quick. Do you want uh, the sideline and the end zone or just end zone? Uh, You know what? I might have actually clipped this. Let me okay, perfect. Let, let me see. Let me see if I can save us some time here. Well, I do have it and I have both. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me oh, let me yeah. actually pull this up. It, it, that's the that was the thing about this is it was hard to cut down which clips I actually wanted to use because I probably had like a dozen. But <laughs> I didn't want to like give you I didn't want to give you homework yeah. or anything. But also when we do this, we end up just nerding out. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah. This is the one. I think. All right. So here's the example of Drake May throwing a crossing route opposite of the way that he's going to step up into the pocket. I think one of if not the best throw that he had this preseason. Yeah, th- this was just such a beauty. And the part of it to me that is just so fantastic is you can see as soon as he gets to hit the top of his drop, he's aware that this is happening, but you don't see him panic and you don't see his footwork get out of whack. You don't see his base get really weird. Like you can see him just immediately like, okay, let me snap it up where I am at the top of my drop, two steps up, throw back across. And it's like, that's probably the most in stride ball he threw all preseason like yeah. that was probably the most perfect place pass that he threw all preseason and you can really appreciate even more from the end zone angle because it's not really a normal throw he kind of has to contort his body here because he's stepping left throws going across so it's like i didn't i didn't really know how to describe it and i didn't want to hype this part of it up too much because i didn't see anybody else mention i'm like all right maybe i'm nerding out a little bit but it just seems like a tough throw to make that you know, watching Mac Jones the past few years, you wouldn't really see him make this kind of throw. But Mac has, yeah, I mean, Drake has the athleticism, the flexibility, and the arm to make this work. Ooh. No, you're right. Because look, like you can see, he knows because this guy still has a chance to like loop around and bend up to get him. He's hitching up really fast there. He's like, okay, I really got to make up space here and get out of the way. Um, and because of that, he's never able to actually settle his feet into this throw. And so to your point, he kind of has to make this weird, like I'm halfway running to the line of scrimmage and I have to just quick whip this out, almost like a shortstop trying to throw back to first or something. And then he just, he just right on the money, man. It's such a good play. That's a gorgeous. One more time. One more time. You got to appreciate it. It's just, it's so clean, man. Yep. Yep. Oh. It's perfect. On the and literally ball. on the face mask. Just perfect ball. So it's good. Right. That's gorgeous. All right, brother. You did a phenomenal job breaking down the tape, the things that Drake they can get better on, the things that he's already doing well. So final prediction. 
when do you think Drake may ultimately starts? What do you think it's ultimately going to come down to? And what strides does he need to make before he actually gets on the field just to kind of put a bow on this whole thing? So, you know, I've said this on, I think, a, a different show before. Usually with a rookie quarterback, you get to be like the, oh, he'll, they play, you know, they play uh, some middling defense on week seven. Let's put him in there. But like, that's just not the reality for the Patriots this year. Wow. It's a murderer's row the whole way through. Um, like the best you're going to get is like, I think it's maybe week six, you know, there's a chance the Dolphins defense isn't, you know, geared up immediately. And maybe they look just whatever for the early part of the season. That might be his best bet in terms of not throwing him into the fire. So that would be around when I start looking for it. I don't really know what it's going to come down to, because I think this is probably a team that knows they're not any good. So I can't imagine that like being one in four thing to be like, oh, we got to panic and throw them in. It's like they probably know they're going to be one in four or something like that. So it's actually hard to gauge, you know, what would be the impetus other than injury. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's just I was actually talking to uh, somebody else um another patriots beat reporter i think it was um you me? oh no it was callahan we work for the same company yeah it so. was callahan yeah yeah it was <laughs> callahan uh, i was talking to him and he made a good point that like it might just be they want to figure out the offensive line rotation first and really get that nailed down before they throw drake into the fire which even for as much as i want to see 17 games of drake may that made perfect sense to me um so it could just be that in terms of what does drake need to fix before he gets onto the field it's really just the footwork and a lot of the dropback stuff. You know, like I said, I think when he, it's almost like the longer he holds the ball, the better his footwork is, which is like the oh. opposite. It's like the opposite of every other quarterback. Most guys can do the the drilled one to two to three, get the ball out stuff, and then they start to go haywire. But he's kind of the opposite where he has the natural instinct for the longer the play goes. But doing the drilled stuff is actually really hard for him. So if he can just clean that stuff up and then just get a little bit cleaner in his pre-snap operation, I think he's already good, especially a guy uh, for a guy who's coming from an air raid system, which is very different from what Van Pelt is doing, obviously. Um, but if he can just get a little bit more buttoned up there and then with his footwork stuff, I think he'll be in a pretty good spot. Derek pleasure and a delight as always brother thank you so much for coming back on now we are recording this on monday so take that with a grain of salt but please let the people know where they can find you one more time just because i want to hear it and let them know what you got coming down the pipeline that patriots nation needs to be looking out for also play that video you just dropped it was very good yeah so uh you guys can find me at qb class on twitter you can find all my work over at the athletic i'm the the co-host of uh, the the main podcast over there, obviously. And then I'll be doing a little bit of a, a column there during the season. Uh, we actually, too, the, the Athletic Football Show season opener in Kansas City at No Other Pub. We're doing a live show, uh, like a live stream, you know, kind of watching along with the game and stuff like that. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. If you guys want to come out to that, if you're in town, definitely go watch that. Hey, look out for me in the comment section. I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, once again, thank you so much, buddy. And thank you all, as always, for watching. Now, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. We'll see you next time. Peace, y'all.